Hey guys, Dana here, back for another video. I um, thought while I'm in the swing of things, rather than leaving it another six months, I'll try and do um, a follow on from the Iron Maiden collection series. Uh, so hopefully I think, looking back at my videos, we're up to peace of mind. So the next one is of course, Power Slave. Uh, now Power Slave, uh, as most of you will know, um, is the second album with the classic lineup. Um, so we now have Bruce Dickinson on vocals, uh, Steve Harris obviously, uh, Adrian Smith, Dave Murray on guitar, and Nico on drums. Um, for me, this um, is potentially my second favorite album behind Seventh Son. Um, a lot of people do rate this album very highly, and I think this was obviously went on to um, become the um, Power Slave tour, um, which obviously turned into Live After Death. So I think, you know, this is certainly one of those um, albums that highlighted Iron Maiden on the map, especially in America as well. I think the tour itself was very um, popular in America and they did a lot of dates over in the US. So I think this is one that really sort of sold the band to people outside of the UK, even if they hadn't done already. Um, but for me, I mean, the artwork is just genius. I think it's such an iconic album cover as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, barring, the, the only slight issue I have is with Lost for Words. Um, I know Cloudy Milder picks up on the whole instrumental thing. Um, and I think some bands manage to pull it off and some bands don't. Um, I made and I've had a few over their albums. Um, this one I don't particularly uh, mind that much, but I don't think it's one of the best. Um, I do find that uh, Metallica, strange enough, do tend to do instrumentals better than Maiden generally. Um, but anyway, we're here to talk about Power Slave. Um, so opener Ace is high, awesome, and obviously on Live After Death you've got the, the Churchill speech in front of that. Two minutes to midnight. Then you've got Lost for Words, Flash of the Bade, and uh, The Duelists, Back in the Village. Now those three songs, a few people have picked up sort of something, they do sound quite similar, and they do. I mean, the album itself has that sort of feel to it, you know, that sort of sound that runs through the whole thing. Um, and it's sort of evoking the title track, Power Slave, potentially more than anything else. And the final track, Around the Ancient Mountain, actually sort of stands out as sounding slightly different it doesn't have that same sort of guitar tone that the rest of the album does i don't know why um but i just think overall cracking album um anyway so let's get to it rather than me waffling on about how good or not this album is uh this is the first uk pressing um so it's the one with power one not sure if you'll be able to see that on the back there um Standard sort of eye of Horus sort of labels. That's pretty standard stuff. Uh, and then you have the inner. Now the difference between this and the second pressing is, again, the only difference I can see, or whether it's just a different pressing one, is the curved edges on the inner. Um, so when I move on to the second press, you'll see that it's just pretty much straight, um, you know? And I'm assuming essentially that's what's denoting the um, the first and second press. I don't think I can see anything particularly on the, the dead wax, obviously other than the matrix number changes. Um, but there you've got the square edges, so they're not rounded. But the album itself exactly the same. Um, like I said, the Matrix stampers are different, but the labels, again, exactly the same. Um, so all intents and purposes, there's no difference really. Um, but it's just good to have that um, separation, I suppose. Um, although for the most part, I haven't gone down the route of getting every pressing. Uh, certainly not this album, anyway. Um, again, this is the UK Fame. Edition. 
Um, now Fame, Pressings and I Maiden seem to go hand in hand with pretty much being quite rare. Um, up until Number of the Beast, very common. So the first three albums, very common to pick up on Fame. Um, but certainly from Peace of Mind onwards, um, they become less and less so. I'm not sure whether that's down to the time period that they were released in. Um, but all the way through to uh, Seventh Son, um, have Fame pressings. Um, obviously the Fame label doesn't exist any longer as far as I'm aware. Um, it's all Parlophone now and a rather near my. Um, but again, exactly the same um, in a, on this one. Um, so you've got the Fame uh, FA. 32.46 on there, sorry, 44, um, which you will also have, which you probably can't see it, so square in it, right in the top corner. And if you'll see that there, so again, that's an indication just to make sure you've got the right um, matching record. And again, it's the same on there, which those keenly eyed will see, it's just pretty much just been an overlay on the original label just to, to take the uh, the actual record itself. Um, somebody asked actually the fame pressing if they're any different. To be fair, I think they are exactly the same um, stampers, so there shouldn't really be any difference in sound quality. Um, certainly the ones I've looked at anyway seem to be seem to have the same stamper markings that the original presses do. Um, this one so, is a German press, I believe, um, or a European press. Pretty sure it's a German one. Yeah, that's a German press. Um, I say certainly on the later albums, I think for the the European side of the market, I think, pretty much did one or two pressings. And in the early days, they did quite a lot of pressings. So you'll find there's a German, there's an Italian, and so on and so forth. So, um, so yeah, that's the German press. Again, exactly the same as the others. Um, no major difference. The labels are all the same. Um, now, this one's a bit special. This, as you can see from the front cover, slightly different. This is the US promo pressing. So this is on the capital label. Um, it's a promotional copy, not for sale as it says on the bottom. It's got the gold border on it. Um, now this was pressed uh, supposedly on um, virgin vinyl. Um, so essentially sort of mirroring pretty much what the US, um, US the Japanese market do in that they will not press records on um, the uh, reused vinyl. Um, I'm assuming there's some sort of degrading quality. Um, so the inner straight away on the US ones, and I find this quite often, is thinner. So it's not a card inner, it's more of a paper inner. Um, it tends to have that lip at the top as well, but to all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same. We've got a capital label on there. Um, and again, the labels are the same, just got capital um, on there. And I think the stamp markings as well will be the same as the usual American press, um, which I don't have the standard American press actually, um, to compare it against for quality or anything like that. Um, I have played this one. Uh, it does sound really good. Um, I still, air towards the Japanese version though. Um, I think the Japanese version has the edge on it, um, but I think that's potentially down just to the, the quality of the pressing plant more than anything else. Um, I do find that US pressings suffer generally in terms of um, quality compared to their European and Japanese counterparts. Not all the time, but for the most part. Um, I think most people would agree on that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one that I needed for the collection, um, especially with it 
since it's looking completely different. So, um, so yeah, good one that one. Uh, next, um, this is the Russian uh, Russian press. Uh, so this is on Gala Records. Um, so there's a slight difference in sort of as you can see sort of colour on the album so it's certainly a lot yellower and potentially not as bright um, but yeah I mean I bought this I guess I picked this up because it was dirt cheap um, and I thought yeah it's another it's another version and then I started looking around um, and the same guy had pretty much all the um, Russian pressings uh, so again similar fashion to the US um, it's a paper in a sleeve rather than a card. Um, as you can see, this is on the Gala Records label, so a different label. Um, I think for the most part, they are, um, but this is a standard press. Certainly on the other uh, Russian pressings, they're pretty much using the, the Fame editions um, and then relabeling them. I think that seems to be the, the standard course. Um, like I say, I've got one and then I started getting the others, which is sort of. Yeah. It's gone into a landslide of me just sticking to UK and Japanese pressings and the other one here and there to sort of saying maybe I'm going to start trying to pick up others as well. Um, but that's another story for another time. So that's the Russian press on Gala. Uh, so now um, this is the Japanese press. Now this I think is the best pressing of all uh, of Power Slave end of. Um, typical Japanese, got the over strip on the side, um, but yeah, I mean you can't beat the Japanese um, for pressing quality I don't think, uh, and normally as well for the uh, the extras that you get in. Um, so here, so we have the inner, uh, and with it being Japanese, obviously it's going to open up into the Japanese uh, language uh, versions of the lyrics and also um, some other bits and bobs, discography at the bottom and so forth. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, we also get a poster to accompany the album so I mean again this is one of the great things about the Japanese um, pressings that you always got the extras in there as well over there um, counterparts across the world um, as you see later on sort of through the series if I ever get around to finishing it uh, you know things do just get better um, up until the point when it reaches somewhere in time which is essentially the pinnacle of the Japanese um, pressings and it's so much like essentially what you'd now class as a deluxe version of the album um, so yeah I mean this does the, the difference in quality uh, sound quality is noticeable on my sort of turntable setup and I'm sure the people out there have got far better turntables than I have so they will see the difference so if audio quality is um, concern to you then I would strongly recommend trying to get Japanese versions of certainly the Maiden albums if not any albums um, and it, it is something that I have tended to try and pick up over the years um, if I see a Japanese version pop up then I will take that over pretty much anything else. Um, picture disc so this is the UK um, picture disc version um, this is the um, original UK picture disc version. I know there are some boots out there. But um, yeah, this is the real deal. So again, um, another nice um, disc to have for the collection. It will never ever get played. It'll just look pretty in my collection. Uh, and then we have the 2012, so that's all I have as far as the original issues go. Um, 
This is the 2012 um, Picture Disc uh, edition, which um, gets housed in the black uh, box usually um, at the end. So this is a gatefold edition as per all of them. So some fantastic uh, pictures from the tour. Um, single album obviously, so we have a single inner which is pretty much um, a copy of an additional eye on the um, eye of Horus there. But of course it has the uh, two singles, so you've got Two Minutes to Midnight and Ace is High. It's the picture disc version. Um, and again, like I say, I've never played these. Um, these are just fantastic collector's items. Obviously well, that's what they were designed for. Um, but I just think they just did such a fantastic job on these, really nice edition, um, having the Obi strips on those. Uh, there are Japanese versions of these, although I think literally the only difference is, um, because I think they were pressed in the UK as well, I don't think they were Japanese pressings, um, is the fact that they have a, an additional sort of paper um, backing, so there's just like a backing on there, which is the... Japanese discography, I think, on those. Um, haven't tried to pick those up yet. Um, a few and far between. Um, I'm happy just to have the UK editions. And last but certainly not least is the recent uh, 2014, I can't believe that's four years ago now, uh, reissue uh, and remastered uh, versions of the, uh, the first eight albums. Now this is, is a pretty good... Um, version and again I think it's one of the ones where uh, if I didn't have the Japanese version I'd potentially go to this to play um, the reader didn't touch up all the artwork and so forth on it and I think that the packaging and everything on there uh, is really good and reflective of what the originals were um, it's obviously on the Parlophone label now really good job on these um, so there's no particular versions on those I know in previous uh, videos I've sort of said I'm after this version or I'm after that version of which I think for the most part I've got those other versions that I've uh, mentioned before in previous videos since uh, there's nothing on the power slave side of things that uh, sort of jumps out to say I must have that version um, although potentially you know it's something that would get picked up if I saw a different variant of it a different pressing so Anyway, so that is Power Slave. By all means, leave me your comments, your thoughts on the Power Slave, your thoughts on my collection. Um, thanks to any new subscribers. Seem to have a bit of an influx over the last couple of weeks, maybe because I've actually done a video. Um, so thank you all. Hope you enjoyed the videos. Old, certainly old, and hopefully the new ones. Um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys.